Hello, welcome to Asynchronous Session for week two, and today we're going to be talking about personal and community health. So here we have a Padlet blog. I definitely want you to do this. This is the bell work. Um, so definitely think about this, and um, there is a link in the chat box. So what you do is just click on that link, and then you're going to hit a on the bottom circle. There's a plus sign, pink circle. Click on that pink circle, and you can add a post and start typing and just pause the recording and you can definitely finish this but think about this analyze your health habits such as what you eat what you drink as well um, do you exercise or do you not exercise or how long do you exercise think about and where you live you know pollution um, air quality or water quality all that and it goes into effect so what is, what is the oldest age you think you can, you will reach where you currently right now what you're doing if you continue that on and keep it going as it goes as time progresses how old do you think you will reach and why did you come up with that age number i want you to give me an i now don't tell me your name don't tell me anything just put in there you know, i or i will reach this age and explain why you know and go in to do that so go ahead and pause the recording Awesome. I appreciate that, and I will approve all those posts. Don't worry if you don't see it. All right, so here we're going to go over our objective target. We're going to analyze why personal community health is important and differentiate how to, uh, how to promote your health, how to, get, you know, how to make your health better, and what we can do. You can always recognize, and we're always going to recognize and analyze the different types of diseases and pathogens. All right, so we're going to talk about community health as, uh, as we go and see how we can promote your personal and community. Right. And important key terms here, we got water pollution. Water pollution is substances introduced into bodies of water that lower the water quality and harm aquatic life. So it harms you, it harms aquatic life, and it even harms the environment as well. You can think about that. And then some protection factor, this is the SPF. So this is the measurement of how long a sunscreen protection against UV rays will last. So think about this, and you might not even know. And think to yourself, how long does it take the sunscreen to wear out, and when? How long should I wait to reapply? So think that to yourself. You thought four hours? Nah, not good. You thought three? You're getting better. Better. Two is the maximum. Every two hours you apply that sunscreen. Think about that. You know that that can go into your age. How how old you are. Think about how you take care of yourself on there. Um. Now we got viruses. Now viruses are non-living particles that invade and infect cells, so they can actually, you know, multiply. So think about that. How they are always, you know, living cells that reproduce. And you know, you got the hepatitis B, you got rabies, you got measles, you know, there is other you know, other viruses that you can get infected by. So think about, you know, uh, and I'll cough, sneeze, and you get the cold or um, get a, a fever, that goes into it as well. So non communicable diseases are diseases that are not infectious or contagious. So an example is Parkinson's disease, diabetes, heart, most heart diseases, like heart attack, um, Alzheimer's disease. These are non-communicable. They're not infectious or contagious. You know, they, they are you know, through age, through genetics and time. So personal health. Why are we talking about personal? Personal health is very important because it's it's your individual wellness. You know, it's how take how you take care of yourself. Um, you know, think about you know how you know the well-being of your physical your physical body, your emotions. Um, so why is it personal health important? Very important to you. You think to yourself. 
Do you want to live longer? Do you want to, you know, have good memories? Just, or do you just want to see how you have a bet with a friend to see who lives the longest? You know, you never know. Um, for me personally, I want to live longer so I can develop memories with you know, my family, uh, with my loved ones, and, and continue that memory on. And it makes me feel better. It really makes me feel good, you know. And as you get older, you feel more appreciative. You know, think about adulthood when it goes into this as your personal health. So individual wellness is very, very important. So um, it's not just physical health. Though. It's your possession of well-being across all life areas, physical, emotional, financial, and spiritual. Those are very, very key. Like if you are not stable and well, you're going to be developing stress. That's what happens. Having sufficient money and using it wisely is very, very important. Or you get the stress on finances, and that can affect your health. And financial health and financial stress can contribute to physical, more physical health problems. Um, think about um, losing, you know, some people, you know, the hair get gray. Uh, so that can happen. You know? so there's a lot of things, but there's always ways you can actually get help. Too. There's not just the bad part uh, of, that, of the stress, but you can always look for, seek out community programs for help, you know, such as food stamps, you know, housing, you got HUD, you know, they have that, what they call it, so they can help you out as well. Um, now, there is, what, what's also important is your spiritual, having solid beliefs, values, and ethics, you know. For some people, that means holding specific religious beliefs. Know, being that Catholic, and some have great, have great strong beliefs, and that's good. You know, having that faith that can make you feel better. Living out personal values, you know, buying a house, buying a car, you know, maybe that's, that's your your go to. Buying video games, games, um, you know, ethics, being selfish or not. Not being selfish, you know. If you're selfish, you know, sometimes that can be negative towards you and that can affect your health. Maybe, you know, that's just what you, you know, having that selfish, unselfishness where you can spread your, your youthful wisdom experiences to help out someone, a friend. Now, having that is great because in the having your good ethics, community comes in, you get repaid back by friends. Now, there's emotional health too, but there, that's positive and negative, you know. The good thing about having good positive emotion health, emotional health is feeling confident and enthusiastic. So, you know, find something that you are passionate about. If it's you know, don't spend too much money, but if it's something that you want to buy and you enjoy, if it's that game that you really, really enjoy, save up and buy that game. If it's a movie, if it's, if it's you know, a, a weekend out with friends, it, you know, it could be anything. But use that to build that confident enthusiasm. Adapt to difficult situations. It's best to always adapt to difficult situations. Some... When you have a positive emotional health, you are able to figure out problems. You're able to figure out situations, scenarios. Another way that you have a positive one is control behavior and express feelings appropriately, not holding grudges, not holding those, um, bottling up your emotions. You know, let it out. Uh, sometimes it's good to talk to someone. If it's just one person you trust, go for that. Go for that. Talk. It, it relieves your stress. And your emotions. Just let it out and get that monkey off your back. You also, ha having that positive emotional health, build relationship with your friends, your peers, even with your family. You know, Sometimes you have those times when you're arguing with your parents, but you get back together. Over time, as you get older, you will understand and be grateful from your peers, from your parents, from your guardians, from your loved ones. It's a care of you. 
stupid. That guy is stupid. Taking that. Now, when you, if you have that heart negative, now, don't, now remember, we each have positive and negative. We all have those goods and cons, pros and cons. That's, we have flaws. So, finding, you have to find that positive and negative. So, here are some negative emotions how that can affect. Yell or sulk. Now, having a negative environment can affect you. You know, so, which way to go? Go somewhere that you can adapt. Change into that positive. Now, if you have a negative, you also have you know, self care is an impact on you. Like connecting with people different. Like, you will have difficulty talking with someone possibly, or not just talking, but connect. You know. Intellectual health is very, very key because you need a open mind. Right, and have lot to learn. Don't go in there. Yo, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. Go in there. Hey, I get to learn about this. having that mindset helps you out. It, it helps you remember information. Helps you do better even in your assignments. Trust me, try it out. Also, having a good education equals financial stability, security, even having benefits. Currently, Stray is in the market of buying a house. Think about how pause, how how that makes me feel. You know, accomplishing that when you buy or purchase something, think about how it makes you feel when you get an A. Or a B in a course that's difficult. How do you think you feel? And then you go to college, and then you graduate, and then you can graduate from high school. Or you know, all these you know, getting that education makes you feel better. It's just stability. You can even think about this as well. You can even get another. You can find another job that in the in the same field. Maybe completely different though. Some people have shifts career, and they it helps them with their intellectual health because they learn something new with the same, with the same degree. Another thing we have to worry worry about is physical health. Physical health is very very important because you have your life. It makes your life easier. Go out there and exercise for thirty minutes. That is very very important. Thirty minutes. Just today. And even you you don't get sore, you don't feel hurt. Mr. A needs to take this advice. There's sometimes you know when I will when you wake up sore, you know, have to working out. And sometimes you wake up like that. So working out helps build up your core. Exercise is a huge thing. Like I said, it makes life easier. Enough sleep. Getting enough sleep. Don't be staying up playing video games. Don't be staying up watching did you hear Stranger Things shows and Netflix and Hulu, all those good shows and movies. Don't be streaming them good. Eight hours of sleep is very, very important. And that's good. And it actually helps your health in the long run. And gives you a, an alarm clock and do an internal clock schedule for your body. Just like as it, as a baby is growing, and you best sleep better. You need enough sleep. Eating healthy, ooh, be eating every hour because I'm eating out a lot. You know, cut it down. Make something on your own. Ask your parents permission. Ask your guardian permission as well. But make some vegetables. Get them. Get a hearty meal. That helps. And look at the serving size. Also, serving size additional fat. Very key, which we know what you're getting. And taking care of your health physically with your medical and your dental care. Don't forget your teeth. Brush them teeth two or three times a day. Wash, floss, do. Yeah, get that floss. 
and then go make sure you take care of your health. And always get your yearly exam. Yearly exam always can check, you know, your skin, your inside your health, your lungs, your heart, making sure you're you're no you're, you're normal. Those yearly checkups help you out in the long run. It might be annoying right now, but hey, in the long run, it's going to be a benefit. That's what you're aiming for. Aim for that uh, 100 age. You can do it. It's been done before. That's how you take care of yourself. Now we talk about, about community environment. We talk about you and how you can take care of yourself. How you can improve your health personally. Promote those health. Tell your friends. But let's talk about environmental environmental health risks. Now we go through problems here. We go through air pollution. We go through water pollution, deforestation. When we have um, chopping trees down or wildfires, that goes into a part. That goes into a part. Um, even waste management, you know, pollution in you know waste is not being just, you know stored or taken care of the right way. Now we got some risk, obviously. It can develop asthma. Stray has asthma. You have to control it with the inhaler. You know, taking care of them. You can also have other respiratory diseases, you know. You don't want that happening. It also contaminates water and soil. What goes up must come down. It's like rain. Rising global temperature sea level. Then we see, we see this a lot. Climate change is a huge concern right now. Rising global temperatures lead to many changes. We see a rise in hurricanes, strength, tornadoes as well. It's it's really scary, you know. Rising sea levels may even contaminate a fresh water supply. So think about floods, how it goes in. in all the chemicals in the house. We got the warmer air, rising temperatures as 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 time progresses. Been rising and rising little by little, not a lot, but just little by little. But it, it can cause stronger stronger storms. And then we've been we've been seeing it. Now what's interesting is that temperature can also alter weather patterns. Maybe long summers, long winter. We already have a long summer in Arizona. <laughs> we don't want a longer summer. It can happen. Rainfall, maybe longer rainfall, but stronger storms. Think about the outside like that. It maybe no storm. We got water storms. Some areas, though, not all areas. Now, water scarcity results in sanitation as well. Hygiene. You don't have water. You can't brush your teeth. That'd be hard to brush your teeth. You're gonna have all the toothpaste in your mouth if you don't even have water. So I have to be <laughs> gather up your spit. That's nasty. Nope. Nope. Don't want that. No saliva. Ugh. Some people have a little choice, but you know. Drinking contaminated water. Sometimes it happens, you know. But if you drink contaminated water, what happens? You get waterborne diseases. Typhoid fleet. Ugh, don't want to do that. So please get some clean water. All the water has been, you know, be very safe. No, there's other there's other ways to get clean water. You got the those faucets that you but uh, you know, saw that cleans up the filters. Always have a filtration system. That yeah, is great. Now, when it comes to social health risk as well, how the experiences can predict a lot of health risk. So think of you know, well, education, good nutrition. We talked about that before in the previous slide. Personal health and everything. You gotta help protect your health. Use, make it positive. 
access to healthcare and safe community keeps people healthy as well. Having a good community, you have, you know, have how health insurance, health insurance, when you have enough health insurance, it goes a long way either keeping society, you know, in the flow. So that's why we want to, you know, have everyone have medical, medical insurance or some way to to pay medical expenses. It's always what we always. Now, when it comes to pollution, we're going to get into environmental health risk here, more into detail what we're talking about. So we got air pollution. Air pollution, we got smog. Smog is what we see. Fog, light, haze caused by industrial smoke. Those white smoke, ah, that's smog. Even car exhaust is a part of it. That's why it's best to, you know, carpool. Carpool when we don't use multiple cars. That hurts air quality when you drive. Now, what's interesting fact is the clean. And here is an interesting fact: when it came to the car emissions and taking care of the, the air, it was more of the Clean Air Act of 1970. Now, it first targeted factories, car factories, because that's that is, it targeted car factories, even targeted the burn coal. A lot of steam engine, remember? Train, steam. Um, steam power was using coal. Coal a lot. So scientists testing air samples discover another major component. Automobile emission. So what they did is in 1975, they created a collatic converter. Collatic converter was installed in automobiles because it helps um, turn harmful gases into less harmful component com compounds like oxygen, water, even carbon dioxide. Now it's a mix. That catalytic uh, catalytic converter helps. Now we also have our ozone layer. We got to take care of our ozone layer. Now what do you, what is the ozone layer? Interior, what is it's a shield that's what it is a shield in the atmosphere that protects the earth now it protects the earth from the sun's harmful UV, UVB and UC rays so don't rely on the ozone layer you gotta put that sunscreen very very key every two hours remember that's in vocabulary Now, we do have another problem, problem we have is our secondhand smoke. We have our smog and secondhand smoke. Now, that's tobacco smoke that fills the air around the smoker, and it goes everywhere. Even though it disappears, it's still technically in the air. Now, we have the water pollution. Water pollution is contaminated. Chemical, radiological, biological waste. If there was a, you know, Chernobyl, Chernobyl that happened, uh, when it exploded, the radiation went everywhere, and the and they had to evacuate the whole building. Now there's, you know, they were worried about the fish that were there and everything. If you know, if there's contaminated in the water. There is. There's contamination in the water, and so they're worried about marine life and everything in that. And they still, to this day, they test. Make sure and see what they're going on. Biological waste, we've seen that. Toxic. Toxins going in water or in the ground as well, leaking. Now, another water pollution we have is the runoff. Irrigation water. When you are watering and it goes onto the street, the water goes onto the street and into the sewers. Some of that can be picks up toxic residue from the ground. And it flows. Rain too. That's another way we get water pollution because it goes we have all those toxics on the street. Or by the sidewalk. 
Now we are able to take care of ourselves when it comes to reducing food. Now we use what we use is carbon footprints. We want to reduce carbon footprints. Now carbon footprints are amount of is the amount of carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases they also call it. And that yeah, it averages out of how much a person produces daily and consumes. So it's the average of the consumer and 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 how much you put out. So that includes car, driving a car, and all that. So we we want to reduce carbon footprint. So what we do? Drivers can walk. In New York, they have a lot. They they have a lot of traffic. They have a lot of people in New York City, especially. But most of them are walking. So they're actually promoting the carbon footprint, they're reducing that carbon footprint. Use public transit buses. Everyone, if you had packed buses and more buses were going around, it helps less cars. It saves at least wait maybe twenty cars if it was a packed city bus. Think about that. Carpool. Carpool is great even if it's just two people going to work, going to work. Two people driving to a party. Two people going to a get together. Saving one car. Now, what type of cars can we also have? That you think in hybrid cars and, or electric cars like Teslas or anything like that? Yeah. There's a new the, the Nissan Leaf. I think it was. It's electric. Yeah. What's interesting as well is buying fewer new items. You always see commercials on TV about buying new cars. We drop. So buying less is actually a good thing. Think about it. And reusing your items, saving your items. Repair, repair, repair. Repair your items. How about? If you can't repair it, then obviously you have, then we'll buy a new one. But if you can repair it, take advantage of it. Save yourself money too. Financial health. Recycle. Oh, recycle is a classic. Go to yard sales. Buying local groceries. Buying local products. Even buying in season produce. That, that's actually helping reduce, you know, pollution. That's crazy. Uh, Now there's ways we can protect our water, I and mean, this you you put you, I definitely want you to challenge yourself to protect your water. Your water. Fix, fixing leaky faucets, make sure there's you see leaks, go fix that. Protecting your water, you know, helps a lot. And you don't have to use it up, and, and it saves you money. <laughs> Install water-saving toilets. Uh, well, it's up to you. Yeah, that is a good idea. We have those water saving toilets when you go to public restroom. You know, automatics. Going to movie theaters. Those help a lot. Saving water. Same with those faucets. Those automatic faucets. Same thing. Even installing a, you know, a certain amount, a certain shower head when you, when you get your own house. Helps you save water and it helps protect the water from using so much. So there's ways to save water, even watering less on your lawn. You know, you can keep your, your uh, grass green, watering it one time a day. I recommend it at night, not a lot. Um, save save yourself money, save yourself, you know, the community, saving the whole community. As well as water. One thing we definitely need to do is protecting our waterways from chemicals and toxins. Do your do your best to take care of those. Our canal, our waterway, those help our produce. That's help with our food. 
definitely want to protect our food. Think about that. What are other ways do you think are ways to protect our water? You know? Think to yourself. What can I do to help protect water? Or what can I do to reduce food? It's always good to think about that. Now we do have diseases as well. You know, we want to talk about diseases. It's a key thing to go get a checkup on the exam to make sure you're you're safe. First, we got communicable 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 disease. Now, communicable communicable disease is infectious disease that can can be spread between people. Now, this is viruses, bacteria, even parasites. All right. Now, parasites is very very dramatic, but yeah. Now, do you think they're contagious or not contagious? Do you think? you think contagious? You're right. They are contagious. Now, it can be contagious indirectly or direct contact. Now, there are some diseases that can that can't be spread indirectly. All right, like touching a door handle. All right, like germs. There's some that are not like that. They and not, uh, you know, you know, get sick from germs. Now, there's some diseases. There's most diseases that you can't. Now, some diseases like pink eye and the flu can spread through casual and direct, indirect contact. Um, now, to limit exposure to those pathogens, people should wash their hands. What do you think? But if someone has a cough, how? Think about how you should cough. Now, this prevents disease from spreading easily. This prevent this helps your community from getting sick as well. You don't want a whole community sick. You get a whole community sick, it's just gonna be a bunch of sick people, and it's gonna be gross. You don't want that. You also want to prevent self-infection as well. Washing your hands, getting hand sanitizer. Going to the doctor, getting the checkup. Now there is some diseases or germs and everything that can spread through the air, such as a cold and the flu. When someone coughs, you gotta stay away five feet. Was five feet? So long. that's 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 a big link. Or nine feet, something around there. Coughs and sneezes are common methods that spray the viruses. There, but, you know, helping yourself wearing the mask is fantastic. I can help you out. Now, non-communicable diseases we talked about in the vocabulary. What, what are they? Again? Contagious or non? The non-contagious. Yes, non-contagious. They're not, and you cannot. You can't get sick, you can't you can't get the germs, nothing like that. Disease can result from genetics, environmental, behavioral factors. Remember, genetics diabetes, high blood pressure, that, that goes into that. Environmental asthma, chronic bronchitis, you know, things like that. Behavioral um, factors as well, how you behave. There's also kidney failure, like, you know, that's something that cancer, cancer is genetic as well, you know, the cells apply and they replicate, go in and that's strokes, remember the heart disease, that, um, even diabetes, by the way, I said diabetes, yeah, diabetes is not about that. Now, how can you prevent you gotta take care of yourself. Exercise. Go get your legs down. Check. Go. Go to a dermatologist. Check your skin. Make sure you know. Don't have no. No scary, scary molds or spots. Those can help. Dental. Dental as well. You always want to take care of. Yourself. 
Now, can't prevent everything, you know. So don't, don't, don't get upset or something. Like that. Hey, keep, keep being positive. If you wanna have a positive mindset. Remember, positive health helps you out. Positive mind. Now, with these diseases, we gotta know about viruses or bacteria. Now, bacteria is a single cell organism. Now, this can be spread through air, soil, water. All right. Now, many are actually harmless and actually helpful. Think about, you know, bacteria turning milk into cheese or even yogurt. If you, if you like yogurt, you're actually having the bacteria. But don't think it's bad. I eat yogurt. It's good, it's good for you, dairy. It's just the way it processes. It's weird. Right. Okay. Even when you digest, having good, good bacteria in your body helps you digest your food. Even fights off bad, the bad danger bacteria. Cold, flu. You don't want that. You actually have good bacteria that's actually in you. Like the good bacteria that you're in. Now, the way you can treat bacteria is definitely by bacterial, inf they're bacterial infections, so using those antibiotics helps a lot. Now, bacterial infections occur when harmful bacteria invade the body. Okay, so it, it, what it does is start reproducing, 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 and most of the bacterial infections cause minor problems. You get the earaches, even my game is sore throat. Headaches is another one. Being dehydrated. But bacterial infections can cause serious such as pneumonia, cholera, tuberculosis. So, you know, take, taking care of yourself, washing your hands, good hygiene is very, very good. But you got antibiotics as well. So don't worry. Now, there's also viruses, living cells that reproduce. All right, these ones can hijack plants, the animals, and people. This is pretty much any any living thing. Now, it causes the, these viruses off seeds, even diarrhea. You know, diarrhea is another one. You know, these those symptoms spread the viruses, you know, from the air. Right? If someone coughs, boom. In your area. Get it. Cold and flus. Now there there is cells. There is cells that help you out. They're called lymphocytes. Now these cells protect the body from and it's a crucial part to your immune system. Right? You wanna you wanna take care of yourself. You, if you need what's a good thing? You have vitamin C. It's a good boost to help you out. Um, but lymphocytes create antibody antibodies that attack those viruses, those pathogens that invade the body. Some of those pathogens, what they do is sometimes they stick on the cell and they just grow. Now, if we didn't have lymphocytes, our body wouldn't be able to fight pathogens all the time, and it's hard to live. Now, this is the best time to move on to the quiz. Now, if you did, you were taking the quiz while you're watching this, great. Um, but go ahead and go to the quiz tab and find in your course, go to click on the quiz tab, click on week two of the synchronous session and take that quiz. And once you're done with those questions, submit and then you get your point. And if there's open essay questions, don't worry, I'll be graded and you'll be in your grade in half.
Thank you. You guys have a great week.